Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I want to go over some editor inspector attributes that you can use to make your workflow a little bit easier and make it easier for your designers to put in data. So I'm going to start off just by creating an empty game object, and we'll call this character. I'm just going to pretend that this is a player character or an NPC in the game. Now I'll create another thing. We need a script, just called character to match. And then we're going to add that on to the game object. And then we're going to get in and start editing things, and you'll see some awesome little features that are just built in and ready for you to use. So here we go, we've got the class open. I'm gonna delete, start, and update. We don't need those for this. And I'm gonna kick it off by creating maybe a health field. So do private or int health, or let's call this max health, make it more accurate. So this would be like our starting health. And maybe it starts out around 100. And then we have a private int damage per second equals, uh, let's start that off at three. Now if I go back over to the editor, you see that those fields are not available right now. That's because they're marked private. Alternatively, I could make them public, but to keep our code clean, we generally want to keep these things private unless they really need to be accessed outside the class. So the first one is just to add the serialized field attribute. And you'll see me do this a lot in other videos. It's really common. Anything that needs to be visible in the inspector, but shouldn't be public outside the class, just gets that attribute. And here you go, we can see we've got these two fields here. I can drag and kind of scroll them up and down. But I can also go like negative and have negative DPS. I could have negative health if I wanted to as well. So let me show you the first one, which is going to be the range attribute. So right above this damage per second, I'll just add range. And then I can put in a minimum and a maximum value. So let's say we want a minimum of one DPS and a max of 10. Save that off, go back over to the editor. And what's going to happen is we're going to get this nice little slider here. So it defaulted to outside the value that was there. You may have noticed it was negative 11. And that's just because the range doesn't force it to adjust when it gets reserialized or reloaded from the serialization. But it will as soon as you start dragging or changing anything. It's going to keep you in those constraints. This is a really, really helpful one. It's probably the number one thing I'd recommend people start using more often. Now, let's go on to some text-based ones. So maybe I've got a name field, right? Let's add a serialized field, private string, oh, let's call it character name, just to keep it separate from the game object name. And then maybe you, well, let's take a look at that real quick. Let's jump over to the editor. You know, see, we just have a text field for the name. But maybe we want more space for this. Maybe, um, in fact, let's do a character description. And we want this to be something where we can type a lot of words. So what we can add is the uh, text area. So just add that text area attribute, go back into the editor, and we're gonna have this new field with a nice big area where we can start typing out our long character description. I can't spell today, I guess. But that's kind of the idea. It lets you do big long fields where you can see it and it's not just all crammed into a little field where you can't really tell what's going on. Now maybe you want a slightly smaller character description. We could also change this to multi-line. And then what, what's gonna happen, you'll see is that this text box is gonna go over to the side now and it's gonna line up. So it still gives us that ability to add things but without adding in a, a separate line and taking up more space. Personally, I prefer the uh, text area most of the time, but this can be helpful too if you really want it to line up like that. Now let me show you how you can organize these. What you can add is something called a header. So you can do header, and let's call this character stats. So just add the attribute, put in quotes, the name of the header, and then maybe this is a header character description. Now when we go back over to the editor, you'll see that these are broken into sections. And this is really helpful when you start to have you know, more than five or six things on a, on a script that you want to edit, it makes it easy to kind of visualize where these things should be. And it also helps to kind of enforce that you keep things in a clean area, a clean way in your code. So the way it works is everything will be under the first header until it gets to the next header. Then it'll just put everything after that. So it's a little bit weird how it's an attribute on here, but just remember that everything is gonna go sequentially down here. So character stats, every serialized field after that will be under there. And everyone will go under description after that and so on. Now this next one is extremely helpful when you're debugging or doing things in the editor. You know, you want to try stuff out and you don't want to add in extra code all the time. So let's imagine I have a method that deals damage. So I do public void take damage 
And all this does is decrement our health. So may I, I'll let's add a private int current health. And our take damage just says current health minus minus just subtracts one. Now, if I want to test this code, you know, when I'm in the editor or maybe run this code when I'm in the editor, I could set up a, a Boolean field or something else that checks this in the update and calls it. I did that in the past, long time ago. It's kind of the standard way I would do these things. Um, now you can just do context menu and give it a name like take damage. Now, if I jump back over to the editor, once we get loaded in, we can just right click on the character and you'll see that there's an option here to take damage. And this is actually just calling that method. So if I switch over to debug mode, our health now should be negative one because I've called it once. Now if I call it again, take damage again, negative two. And if you haven't used debug mode, it's a nice way to see your private fields um, without making them public. So that way you can kind of debug and see what's going on without changing your code and breaking things. You do lose the awesome custom inspector stuff though when you're in debug mode. So you always wanna switch back when you're done debugging. Now you can also add these context menus to a specific field. So say I want a context menu over my damage per second. What I can do here is do context menu item and let's say choose random DPS. And then we have to give it a um, method name. So we'll call this uh, randomize dps and then what, what i do is copy that name and then make a method here so the private void randomize dps and here we'll set damage per second to a random value so just do damage per second equals unity engine dot random dot range and may i go one to ten just like that save that off go back to the editor and now let's see select the character and you'll see that I can select or right click on the damage per second and hit choose random and get a random value every time. So again, these things are really helpful for especially editor tools. If you're doing something where you need to configure things in the editor, maybe position things correctly, fracturing buildings was one I did this on, it was great, you just right click, hit fracture buildings and it fractures them all. And it gives you some of that callback functionality that you would normally need to write a custom inspector for, just right in your class and in a kind of simple basic way where you can call it easily so there are a couple other of these that i have shared on the website i'll put a link down below so you can check them out or you can copy them for reference with some examples um, if you like the video of course don't forget to like and hit subscribe share with your friends and thanks for watching